<laughs> All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Good evening. There's about 13 um, attendees. I anticipated about 14, so maybe we're just missing one person. Uh, but this is your human services practicum orientation. Um, so we're going to go through a few ins and outs of what, orient, um, <clears throat> what practicum is, what to expect, what uh, is expected from you. Um, I'll go through even the course syllabus a little bit so you can see. Um, and Gerardo will be my co-host and taking care of questions and helping me out along the way. So um, keep in mind, if we look at the course schedule, um, after your first semester of um, in the Human Services Associates program, your second semester requires you to, what does it require? The suggested course sequence is to take 205, uh, which is practicum one. So um, if you're a human services major and this is your first semester and you're, you've got you know, most of your coursework um, done for this semester, you should be very seriously considered taking uh, practicum one in the spring to stay on track. Otherwise, it might take you an extra year to graduate. So you're taking a two-year program or a 24-month program or a four-semester program into you know, three years. And that, um, that's going to delay graduation and um, the sequence of courses that you're going to take. So with that, we'll get into it. Um, and of course, um, we're here to answer any questions you might have as, as uh, we go along. So. Well, let's get started. So the purpose of uh, field experience is to give you real world training um, in human services agencies where you find human services professionals. Um, and we have a lot of different opportunities for you to, to um, take advantage of this opportunity, but there's also um, agencies that you might have in mind that we have never affiliated with. And Great Basin College has an affiliation agreement, which means basically that that site, let's just take, um, in, for example, um, Opportunity Village. It's a nonprofit here in Las Vegas. And uh, we have a student that's in the bachelor's program completing their internship there. So they solicit the site, said, I'm a, I'm a Great Basin College student, human services and I'd like to do my practicum hours there, do you have opportunities for me? Um, usually they'll say yes, because um, in a sense, it's, it's free labor for them. Or, but it's not free, they're exchanging their mentorship, supervision, and training um, in exchange for your work uh, in that capacity. And then what you receive, you're not paid money, so say, but you're paid in experience. And that experience is very valuable when you go on to the job uh, market. Um, so there's a number of uh, uh, specific objectives that the supervisor must um, must adhere to, including evaluating you um, as a practicum student at your site. And in addition to that, they must have a degree, at least of the one you're of, of trying to obtain. So our accreditation requirements say that your your supervisor of your site must at least have an associate's in human services or a related field. It doesn't have to be exactly human services. It could be social work, psychology, something in the social social sciences um, that is comparable. Um, and it's, it's okay to have something a little bit different because it provides an opportunity for you guys to learn from uh, the experience and perspective of diff different disciplines. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, so, what and I might be getting a little ahead of myself, and I will explain the, some of this stuff in further detail. You're going to want to, um, after orientation, you're going to want to uh, review some documents that I will give you access to. You'll have a, a folder, a shared folder that you have some. Um, uh, hold on, let me pull it up here. I'm getting ahead of myself. So this folder which will be uh, through my Google Drive, you'll have access to, if I can find it, I'm a little confused here, there we are. 
Okay. No, that's not it. Um, and there's a few things that you want to uh, keep in mind here. Uh, the main thing is this, the student handbook that you should familiarize yourself with. It's on our website, on our program website, but it's also here just for convenience. Um, also the uh, practicum site letter of introduction that is a letter written by me that explains what practicum is to these folks because if it's a new site they might not be familiar with uh, the requirements so this provides you an introduction um, to the supervisor or the site that you're interested in if it's a site that we're already affiliated with um, more likely than not they won't need this but this is to kind of uh, provide a little bit of foreknowledge of the experience that they're expected to do because sometimes sites might be worried well, well, I don't know if we have enough time to, to provide the kind of supervision you need it, but most sites are pretty um, agreeable to to having students work for them because it provides them with much needed labor force um, in exchange for um, in exchange for the training they're going to provide for you so that's a one thing that's um, on there um, Another thing that I have is my, this actual presentation is stored here. So in case you forget anything, you can look back through it. Um, there's also my contact information. Uh, also, uh, there's a link to the ethical standards for human service professionals. Uh, well, it's not gonna let me do that. Um, hmm, I thought that was a web link. Um, and we also have a pre-registration link for Phil Experience. So what you want to, do, uh, no, that's not it. Where is it? Yeah, this one. So what our admin did is she created a uh, Google form that you can go fill out and pick the uh, practicum site you'd like to, to work at. We've got a list of ones that we've affiliated with before. Uh, keep in mind, some of these are not necessarily ones you want to do human services because we affiliate for different uh, types of programs, including nursing, paramedics, radiology, social work, uh, human services. So she kind of added some in here that I don't know if they're really, you know, um, right up our alley. The main one that I saw here that I didn't like was Genesis Home Health because I don't want you guys in home environments this earlier in your field experience. Um, nursing, they, they do that kind of stuff, but they've got another nurse with them all the time. So she broke it down into geographic areas, Elko, Ely, Fallon, Lovelock, Battle Mountain, Pahrump, Las Vegas, uh, Reno, Winnemucca, and if the site that you're looking at is not on here, um, provide the uh, name, the address, phone number, contact person, their email. But you have, should have talked to this facility before uh, providing her this information and submitting it there. Okay, so that way, um, this form is incomplete because it doesn't have your contact information, which is gonna be really helpful. So um, for now, hold off on using this. I'll have her update it with, uh, otherwise she's gonna be at a loss where to place you. We just did this today, so we're still working out the kinks. Um, the other thing I have is a... Um, um, Oscar, um, are you gonna be showing the folder or is you're just reading out of that? Yeah, here's the folder. Uh, because we're still seeing the presentation. Oh, you're, you're not seeing uh, my folder? No, it's a presentation. <laughs> oh, are you not seeing any of the documents I'm going or Hold on, let me, let me take down the presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sorry, thanks for catching that, Gerardo. So I've been talking the whole time. So here is, no, that's not it. Here's the folder, and this is what it'll look like when you go to that link. Um, so it has these files available to you. So you guys didn't see any of that stuff. <laughs> okay, let me go back. Let me go back a tick here. So um, we're still seeing your PowerPoint. Really? Mm -hmm. 
I am not seeing it. I have, I minimize it now. Screen sharing. Yeah, I see you click in the minimizing button. Say, hold on, it says screen sharing is paused. I have never seen that before. Oh, let me stop and I'll do it again. Okay, you see my desktop now? Now I can see it. Well, thank, thank God you were there to <laughs> point that out. I've gone along and everyone would have been confused. <laughs> I would have wondered why people were so <clears throat> unaware of what was going on. So again, here's the folder that, um, that will provide you a link to. So you have these resources available. Um, here again is the practicum letter that I was discussing, uh, the inter excuse me, the introduction letter to practicum that you can provide to any interested um, agencies that you're looking at. Um, I also put a, a quick list together today of hmm. well i thought i did one second Okay, I have a list of previously affiliated sites um, with the, con the phone number for the agency and they're broken down by geographic area too. I'll put this in the share drive so you all have access to that. So there's a lot of different uh, opportunities what I would suggest as you're, as you're looking over your site that you start researching it, you know? Um, so I'm like, Oh, I live in Winnemucca and here's a, you know, here's a, here's an agency that I might be interested in. So let me take a look at what that looks like. Make sure it's in Winnemucca. Um, oh, they have a Facebook page. Um, let's see. Do they have a website? Mm, I think they did. So you can kind of get a feel of what this agency does, what they're about by doing a little bit of your own research. That way when you're ready to contact them and ask them for, um, for them to provide you with internship experience, you know a little bit about what they're doing. You don't want to kind of go in cold um, because that kind of shows that you're not really prepared. Um, and maybe they might think, well, this person might not be a good fit here because I don't want to spend too much time trying to bring somebody up to speed who's really not interested in what we do here. Um, so do, do a little bit of research, just like you would for anything you're interested in um, to, to kind of help uh, prepare yourself. Now, this might seem a little bit intimidating to you, but this is how you get a job. And this is part of the experience is that you're gonna to have to call some of these folks, look them up, you know, spend some time getting to know what they do, um, here's another one I found. This one is in the Elko area. Uh, some of you might be f familiar with Vitality. I think, uh, no, this isn't the website. Um, I was trying to get the websites, but some of them were like, the links weren't working, so I just decided to just use the phone number. So um, in any case, you've got this document here, which has some affiliated sites that you can take a look at. If one's not on here or an area that you're interested in isn't on here, that's okay. Just contact them, ask them if they're interested in um, supervising uh, practicum students. And if they are, then then no problem. You can just, have them sign the affiliation agreement um, 
Felicia is saying, I'm going to be moving out of state before next semester. Can I still do my practicum at GVC out of state? Absolutely. You can do it in any locale where you live. So the thing is, we don't have affiliated sites. We don't have too many outside of Nevada. So if you decide to do that, you're going to just have to find a site that can host you um, for the semester. So just keep that in mind. Okay, getting back to my PowerPoint presentation. I don't want to go into show mode because I'm afraid it's going to do that weird thing again. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'll just keep it. You guys can see that? Gerardo, you can see that, right? Yep, I can see that. Mm -hmm. So um, we used to have the students get the affiliation agreement signed, but nowadays um, Winnie, our department administrator, will contact the site for you, get the affiliation agreement signed, and then um, and then put it in our files because that there's there are some legal um, requirements and so we have to make sure that we're keeping track of that the affiliation agreement only lasts for three years so if a site had been a, affiliated but it's no longer because three years have lapsed since they've had a, a an agreement signed they might have to get one signed again um, so once you've done some research you know um, you've decided on a, a couple sites that you want you're interested in call the agency set up a time to meet with the, the potential supervisor or the agency director dress professionally use appropriate formal language um, bring your resume if you don't have a resume we have a career center the gbc career center and in this link you can follow it and they can help you write a resume so don't be intimidated by that um, treat this meeting as a job interview uh, you know, a lot of, many of my graduates end up being employed at their first or second practicum sites. And so, you know, they've, Nevada, you guys are in a good position because Nevada doesn't have a lot of um, highly educated workers. So when you're going through these uh, practicum sites, they're like, oh, we want, we want to get a hold of these folks because they're rare. And so they like to um, employ our graduates. If you define it in your first practicum, you're not really jazzed about it, like it was like okay experience, but you were expecting maybe more hands-on or working with a different kind of population, then choose a different site in your second semester. That's why we have two practicums broken out. Now you may have seen that the requirement is that you do 300, uh, excuse me, it's 180 hours of service per semester but we've actually cut that down to 150 hours to keep that in line with our accreditation standards. We were kind of over the standard. So if you do the math, it's about 10 to 12 hours a week that you're gonna be working at your practicum site. Now you can discuss, um, you can make arrangements with your practicum supervisor like to work with your schedule if, if they're amenable to it. If they're not, they're like, no, these are the hours we have for you, then you might need to choose a different site, okay? So you're not beholden to them, but as you're, um, you know, you, you meet with them, you set up, you know, you're deciding to, this is a good place for you. They give you a tour of the facility, ask for one if, or ask what they do. Also do a little bit of research so you come prepared. Um, you, can, you can set those uh, terms um, up and, and, you know, so, some of you folks might work. I'm sure, you know, you might have small children, you, you know, you have other responsibilities. So find a way to make it work, but don't set yourself up for failure and, and not have time available in your schedule to complete your practicum. Look, this program is 100% online. The only time that you actually have to go somewhere to do something is during practicum. And this is a really important part of the program. Um, so I don't think it's too much. You know, I think it's, it's, a, it's really for you guys. Um, Let's see, uh, Kayla's asking, do a lot of places have weekend availability? Yeah, actually a lot of folks, a lot of these agencies are open on the weekends, so you can, a lot of times you can get your hours in there, um, but it's not always the case. So when you're asking, you know, ask them what, what kind of hours do you have available? Um, because you also need that, that supervisor has to kind of work, be working with you too. Um, ask them about any kind of background checks, um, health screenings that are required, fingerprints. Ask them if they if you have to, if you have to pay for those, because um, the college won't pay for those. You're going to have to pay for those out of your pocket. 
Um, so those are expenses you want to consider. Most agencies do pay for those kinds of, um, uh, you know, requirements like fingerprinting and background check for their employees. So it's usually not a cost that you're going to have to absorb, but it sometimes it might be, you know. Um, so once you've you've uh, got a site you want to you want to pick out, you, you can actually if you're sure you're going to do your practicum next semester you can just let me know email me and i will email the program or our, our, our admin or our department admin and let them know that you're going to um enroll in 205 because you need my permission to get in there um or Herodos, it doesn't matter I, either one of us will work so and that that's so we keep people um from enrolling in practicum that haven't taken the practicum orientation, which is what you're doing right now. Because folks will sign up thinking, oh, um, I don't know. And then they get in the class and they're like, I don't know what's going on. And you know, they think it's like any other class, but there's a lot to prepare for. And you don't wanna start thinking about doing this stuff when your class starts. You wanna start thinking about it now. The clock starts now. So uh, you know, I think you've got about, uh, we, we've got the month of the week of, let's see. Eight. You've got about twelve weeks before you start the next semester, so um, we've got a break for Christmas. Try to get a lot of things done then. Keep in mind the holidays are a time where people are the agencies are busy. They might be closed for the holidays, so I notice a lot of you will send emails uh, like on your downtime, like um, you start you know maybe have time to to, to do other things like on the weekends or on a holiday. And I don't respond because, you know, that's my weekend and holiday. Professional, you know, kind of respect the professionals, their time, and make sure you're, you're contacting them during work hours, regular work hours, because they're going to be like, why are they calling, you know? <laughs> they're not going to get back to you right away. You won't be able to talk to them. So that's something I always try, try to do your work during business hours um, and just get used to that because that's, um, school is one thing, but in the professional world, we, I think we try to be respectful of each other's time and do that as a, as a matter of like professional courtesy. Um, you don't, when I get an email from somebody at two in the morning, I'm like, like Gerardo, why are you emailing me at two in the morning? You know, um, even sometimes I'm up at that time doing work, I will schedule my email to go out at 8am, you know? because I'm like, I don't, some people might have their phone. I don't know. I just try to, I just try to be considerate. I think about how I would want to be treated and kind of try to do the same thing. And, um, and adding to that, Oscar, I think that it also speaks about you as a professional, uh, as an individual that is, you know, capable of seeing your own schedule and, co and be considered to other colleagues of yours. So in and out itself is kind of a, the professional um, approach that you're having to these new sites that you are trying to outreach. So um, always consider that. And, and I like what you say, Oscar, to consider this like um, a job hunting, um, how you want them to see you um, and, and treat it as a such. This is the way I'm presenting myself as an, a professional, as someone that can manage the time, someone that um, can present that to the agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it's not easy. I, I, I know some of you already in, like might be mid-career. Some of you are, are just starting work or have, you know, are just starting or in your college years. So these are the things I'm just kind of reminding you to so, so you're prepared and you feel confident when you show up at these sites. Um, so I mentioned this, um, Make sure when you work, start working in your practicum uh, that you attend sites during your agreed upon hours, arrive on time, just like you would for any kind of job, leave on time. Um, it, you know, make sure you, you're communicating um, when you'll be there and the expectations of what you'd like to learn. Because you do have some latitude there, like, you know, and let them know, like, I really like to get into intake or I really like to shadow somebody doing diagnosis or, I'd really like to be a part of the um, the psychosocial rehabilitation group because you want that experience. But vocalize those things so they know because a lot of times when professionals are supervising students, and I, I supervised students when I was uh, 
in the graduate program at UNLV, uh, sometimes you're, they're kind of in their own ta daily task and they might not think about it. So advocate for yourself, speak up, you know, obviously in a respectful way. Um, let's see, what's else? Um, you know, use the kind of skills that we're training you to use with clients, with your uh, peer professionals as you're working um, in your practicum sites. So let's take a quick look at what the class looks like. Uh, that's not for you guys. Um, So here is 205, this is from spring 2019, so it might look a little bit different. But here are some different assignments, um, practicum agreement and related activities. So I'll have you fill out your supervision agreement, um, your timesheets uh, will be due at the end of semester. Um, this is old, so that should be 150. Um, and you've got lots of like different kind of paperwork tasks that I need to keep track of. So I create assignments from that. Um, there's some discussion agreements about your expectations. You guys kind of, kind of share those field experience, learning objectives. This will, this will be, um, uh, articulated different performance domains that you can take a look at, um, intervention, the direct services, interpersonal communication, self-development, and then there are um, paired assignments to go with that. So, uh, so you'll kind of come up with a self-development plan. You can plan this with your, your, your site supervisor, and then there's an actual um, kind of form that we use to do that. And this is important because it keeps, it lets, it lets the supervisor know what kind of outcome and expectations um, they're gonna need to, excuse me, a, a kind of experiences they're gonna need pr to provide you. And then it kind of sets the tone, like I'm here to learn. I'm here to work, but I'm also here to learn specific skills and we're gonna talk about those skills. So you'll fill this out. If you have any questions about doing that, just let me know and I, we can talk it through. But you have been doing uh, in 102, I'm sure, some treatment planning already. This is the same format. I actually took the treatment plan form, probably looks familiar to you guys, um, and I modified it for the development plan. Um, and it's, it's a, I think it's a useful tool, especially when you're starting out to kind of, to set some goals and expectations up. Um, the other thing that you, uh, that I want to let you guys know is that um, the book for this course, is the same book for um, Practicum 2. So Practicum 1 and Practicum 2 have the same book, which is not that one. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, this is it. Um, it's a 26 chapter course, uh, excuse me, book, uh, textbook. And so in the first Practicum 1, you'll do the first like 13, 14 chapters. And then in Practicum 2, you'll do the remaining, so you don't have to get a new book. And then it goes through the whole kind of litany of, um, different topics for, um, you know, field experience and internship, applying different models, cultural competence, attitudes and boundaries. And it, it, I really feel like it go, it, 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 what you'll get to do is kind of reflect on your reading and then you'll go out and kind of practice and observe those, um, those kind of uh, topics uh, within, your, within your experience. So I think it pairs really nicely. You also have weekly quizzes and exams, of course. Um, and let's see what else here. You're going to be evaluated by your supervisor. And the way we have that set up is through a survey, an online survey. Um, there's a self-evaluation that you'll do for yourself. And there's a, a, mid, uh, a supervisor evaluation. Let's take a look quickly. And these are pretty basic. This is, I didn't get too crazy into this because I really just want you to have time to reflect. So you put your information in there on um, describe you know, what skills and knowledge required, what you'd like to improve on, where some limitations. And then, um, and that's pretty much it. This is, this is one of your um, self-evaluations. The <clears throat> supervisor evaluation is a little bit more structured and has um, kind of collects more data and information. Uh, that's, the, so that's the final one. 
Where is it? There it is. Supervise evaluation. Now it's going to be your responsibility to get this link to your supervisor. And I would recommend, you know, going over it with them, not just letting them do it on your own because, and at least discussing the, the outcome so you're not surprised. Um, so you're going to put in uh, your name, their information, the supervisor information, because I will contact them uh, throughout the semester and check in to see if they, you know, just have any questions or comments, see how things are going. Um, and then they'll evaluate you kind of on a Likert scale from zero to four. Um, is, is the, you know, is the student dependable, prompt, flexible, constructive, enthusiastic, shows initiative, responsibility, has appropriate hygiene and appearance. And I want to stress this because you, I, I'm going to, this is, I, f I feel very strongly that you are representing the college and you are representing me and Gerardo because this is our program. So I want you to keep that in mind. You know, we make it a point to provide the best possible training education that we can. And at the same time, we want you to bring your best um, to the experience. So keep that in mind. You're representing the college, our reputation. And I, I mean, I've had, we've, we've had uh, practicum students, um, you can't say they're fired, but they were, they were let go um, because of certain issues. It wasn't hygiene related, but it was, uh, and I don't, we don't need to get into it, but at the same time, um, if you're having a conflict with your supervisor, come talk to us and see if we can't give you some strategies for working it out. I'm not, we're not going to rescue you, but at the same time, if you're in a dangerous environment, you don't feel comfortable there, you think something's up, please let us know. We want to know because you know, the world, uh, is not perfect and there are issues wherever you go. And we have to have realistic ex expectations for that. Um, Having said that, these are professional agencies and they should have good standards in place to ensure the safety and welfare of their employees and anybody who serves there. Um, so seeking information and appropriate support, asking questions, attending meetings, demonstrating ethical behavior and responding well to feedback. And then they'll kind of rate you on some different skills. Um, client skills, uh, and then maybe a brief narrative of what you're good at, what, you're, what you need to work on. Whatever grade they put in here is the grade you get for your uh, midterm evaluation. From Now, this is worth 200 points, and your evaluation is 100, so there's kind of a balancing out there, but obviously there's more weight on this one because they're working with you day to day. Um, I think... I think that's kind of it for right now. So why don't uh, we open up some of the time we have left for questions. Um, uh, Oscar, Oscar would you like to um, explain the hours log so the students know? You know they yeah, so the hours log, we have one in the Human Services Handbook. Um, and, um, but if you, but, and you can use that to uh, submit that. See where oh, there's 34 instances of hours in here. Um, let's see if I can find it really quick. It's somewhere in here. I think it's towards the end because everything, all the forms are in the end of the. Um, now here's another assignment that you're going to do is your practice agreement with your supervisor. This will be. Um, and you'll fill this out, student responsibility, instructor responsibility, practicum supervisor, everyone signs it. You submit that for grade. Um, time records, here we go. So here's a time sheet you can use and you can duplicate this if you need to get, you need more spots here. If you kind of use it for a weekly, you know, one. Um, and then you'll submit those at the end of the semester. There'll be an assignment. 
um, and you know, signed off by your practicum supervisor. I think hours log. And I think I can show you maybe this past student what they submitted. That is not a good example. <laughs> yeah, we had a kind of a funky semester because of COVID, so students can't get back to their sites. But this is a good example of the person using the log, okay? And you're just going to submit that with, with your total hours. Nobody looked at their grade, so it's you know it's not that big a deal. You just got to make sure you get the 180 hours within the semester, right? If you're not getting those, if you're behind on your hours, talk to your supervisor. Say I need to make up some hours. I you know this end of semester is going to come. If you do not complete your hours within uh, the time frame, you're going to have to take an incomplete, and then you're going to have to finish those hours afterwards, and then you're going to create a bunch of paperwork for me which is fine. If it happens, it happens, but we want to try to kind of avoid that because it's going to be more work for you. Then you're going to be in the middle of your second practicum and you're still trying to get hours from your first practicum. So it's 150 hours divided over 16 weeks, figure out a schedule that's going to work within the time constraints that you have um, and be realistic too. You know, if you've got a lot of different responsibilities, don't try to cram a lot of things in. Now, some students have asked me, can I do all my hours like within the first a few, few weeks? If that's your only available option, I prefer you kind of sp spread it out through the semester. It's going to give you a better experience and um, more time in between um, and also time to do your schoolwork. But if that's the schedule that you come up with and your site supervisor agrees with it, I'm okay with it. So there's some flexibility there. Um, is, I think that's it, right? Anything else? Okay, so let's go on to some questions that you guys might have. Anything? So I will send out um, a email to everybody that was here or, or a, a, a message through Canvas or probably an announcement to get all of you um, with the, the links that we talked about that we give access to the folders and things like that. Um, my first practicum was at, Rachel's asking me, my first practicum was at Community Counseling of Southern Nevada, and I was doing mental health assessments. Um, but this, what, I didn't have this experience until my graduate program. So in my undergraduate, I studied psychology, and it was a bachelor's of arts, and they didn't have any, um, we didn't have any kind of practicum. So when I, when I think about what you guys get to be exposed to this in your second semester of your associate's program, I'm like, man, they're going to be set up like to have all kinds of opportunities and experience. I was, you know, I was looking for jobs after my grad program with, I had field experience from, from my practicums because we do practicum plus um, internship for four semesters. So we have a lot of hours. In my program, we had to get a thousand hours. Um, but of course, this is advanced mental health counseling. So, but um, it was a wonderful experience. I had a great supervisor who became my great supervisor, mentor, and friend, Ron Lawrence. Um, he just recently retired last year, but he's still, I still go running to Ron when I have problems. But, um, and uh, we've had a wonderful experience. Um, the link for the Zoom was hard to log into on the email and webcam. Yeah, it's not sure why. You know, I don't know. Sometimes links through Zoom act funky, and I've got to open up the Zoom app on my computer or my phone and then type in the or, or copy and paste the meeting uh, ID. I don't know why that happens. I don't have a lot of control over that, but thanks for letting me know. Um, my workaround is just to open up the app and put in the meeting number and then usually that uh, circumvents the link. Cause the link, they give me the link, it's, it's auto-generated. It's not like I create it, so. Um, any other questions? I know it's a lot of information, um, but of course we have time to, a to ask, ask her those questions. 
as you go along, as you get into this experience. Um, a lot of the information is gonna be in this folder here. Um, I even have a little breakdown of things you wanna do in order here. Attend practicum, review these documents. Um, email me to permission to enroll in uh, 205. Begin your site selection. Uh, contact me if you have any questions. And then um, also remember we'll have that affiliation list, affiliated list um, in this. I haven't moved it there, but I'll move it here tonight. Um, so you have can look over some areas. Um, if you don't find a site that you're looking for, one thing is uh, where does somebody live? Somebody give me a county where they live in. Washoe, okay. So all count, just about all county websites have um, some type of resources for their citizens, the, the people that they provide um, services to. Um, so here's children's services. You, um, maybe this isn't a great one. Human Services Agency, Adult Services, Children's Services, Resource Guy. See, so see how I did that? And I, this is kind of my experience. You might not know this, but over time you'll realize this is something you can always count on because part of government is to provide health and safety for their citizenry, right? And you can fi find agencies that, that provide things for different, different programs, things like that. And you, and you can call them up and say, hey, um, this is a, something, here's one I just kind of, Indigenous Services Program. Um, you can call up and say, I'm really interested in this program. I'd like to work with this population. Um, here's my resume. Here's some background um, of the education that I've already received. Don't forget to use your education and training and those topics <clears throat> in, in your coursework um, as, as, as education you've received. So they kind of know you've been intro introduced to certain things. Uh, adult group care. So there's the program, there's the number. So you see how easy that was? Sometimes it might seem overwhelming, like how do I find out where I want to go? You know, it's, it's just a little bit of um, information can go a long way to help you guys find the site you're looking for. Okay, somebody's got root. Uh, Let's see, Riverside County, are you in California? Yesenia? Okay. Moreno Valley, my sister used to live there. <laughs> so here we are, we're just now on the county website and then there's services. Um, so what else do they have here? Health and, okay, human research, human services. See how it's all set up based on our profession. Um, human houses, businesses, community services. And they have whole departments dedicated to these, to these services. And you can decide to, you know, to, to see if you can do your practicum in any of those agencies. Um, and then you might just look up, you know, um, human services in your area, maybe in your city. Another thing you want to remember is um, think about the geographics, like how far away is this site from where you live? Do you have a car? Do you have transportation? Do you, are you going to need to walk? You know, find something that's, that is, you might need to drive. And some of you folks live way out there. I was looking at Winnemucca today, or not Winnemucca, but what's that window over and I was like whoa that's way up there and some of you might so you need to plan around that I know it's not always easy to get around the state there's also really tough weather up in the north um, so that's another thing you want to consider as you're coming um, we're coming out in the spring semester there's ice and snow and you want to plan for those kinds of things so um, make sure you have reliable transportation if that's how you're getting there or if you have public take public transportation there are routes available to you. Just start thinking about those things now uh, and, and just break down each problem one at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. And if you, if you feel like you have a lot of questions or you've got some anxiety about the whole process, that's normal. These are, this is new. 
but we're here to support you through it. And if you have questions or you want to talk about it, just let us know. We're available. Um, but don't get, don't get, don't wait till the last minute. You know, don't wait till it's too late. Um, Oh geez. Um, so Chloe's asking a question here. Is there a chance that we can be hired um, by them even if our associates isn't finished yet? Yes, a lot of folks are hired at, however, you cannot be paid for your internship hours. So it, that would have to be kind of a separate agreement between you and the agency. Um, and that happens all the time. I, I love hearing, I've been, uh, as I'm meeting with students over the semester, I've been hearing them tell me that they know graduates of our program because they're looking at internship sites and they went and now they're running those agencies, which is, uh, it just brings, uh, a lot of joy to me because I'm like, that is so cool. Um, and that's how it goes. So the good thing is that we've got, um, uh, f former students, graduates of our program in a lot of these agencies already. And that that's going to speak to, you know, the quality of our program and also the experience they got. And they'll be sensitive to your experience because they know what it's like having done that. And when, in my, when I was in my uh, field experience, it was the same thing. People have, had, had gone through the, the pro same program and were you know, there to provide me support and sensitive, like, oh, you need to know this and things like that. We have 23 participants now. That is so great. Um, I think, are you looking at some of the questions here, the Q&A? Gerardo is another one about making an advising appointment. I, I am. I'm okay. actually answering some of the questions. Uh, for all of you guys that have received my message about scheduling and one-on-one -on -one with uh, me, if you are having challenges scheduling them, just send me an email and I will walk you through. Um, we have a very interesting questions in the Q and A uh, section. Um, Sherry, for example, is saying that she will do hers in um, uh, Idaho, I believe it is. So I was just sharing with her that it's good that our program is solely open and online because it allows for that possibility. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, when you go to a job interview, you know, is, is great a program that we provide. Employers look at experience. So the, you wanna highlight those things in your, in your resume, in your application after your practicum and keep track of all the things you do. Keep track of all the training you do, put that on your, you know, resume. Um, in academia, we, we uh, develop kind of narcissist because we're always touting all the things all of our accomplishments you know every training i go to every speaking engagement every presentation i do goes on my vita um and um your cv your curriculum with tie and academic means your academic life and it it is a representation of your 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 experience education um and expertise uh, and your resume is the same thing, uh, which is a resume is kind of used more outside of academia, but CVs is what we use in the academic world. And, um, and I, would like, I would like to actually invite everyone, Oscar, to, to not see your practicum or your services as, gosh, another um, requirement for the program or more hours I need to give in. This is a great opportunity for you to develop the skills within the field. This is a great opportunity for you to kind of realize, do I want to actually do this all my life? So it's a great a learning opportunity that will give you enough information to decide what do you want to do in, in the future years. But besides just um, helping you to decide about it, it provides you with the skills uh, of the different um, abilities that you will develop through the human service uh, are, are just amazing. Um, so consider that to be a, a great learning opportunity. Um, and as Oscar mentioned, if you ever feel a challenge or if you face a difficulty, I'll reach us. Um, you don't have to go through it alone. Um, and I think part of my experience is that many of the individuals that go to practicum or even internship, 
they just don't share what is happening. And so right. they get extremely frustrated or disappointed. Um, and, you know, know that we are here for you. We can work things out. We can process. We can reflect together. The, the goal is for you to feel good of what is happening to you and for what you are doing and how you are helping others. And we're charged, you know, to some degree with protecting you if something is happening. So let us know if there's something um, unethical happening at your site or there's some kind of conflict that, that isn't kind of out of, is out of normal, you know, there are going to be normal um, experience, you know, experiences of, and challenges, but um, and it's, it's been a great experience since I started at GBC in 2016. I've had practicum students from all over the country, Illinois and uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, Atlanta. I mean, all California, Idaho, Utah. I can't remember all of them now. And it just, it's, it's just a great experience that, that we can provide this education online and then folks still get really good uh, practicum experience as well. So. Um, Having said that, um, I think, is there any other questions or? I can't it looks see. like we answered them all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think of any more after our meeting uh, closes, uh, just feel free to contact us and, and go from there. Please take advantage of uh, the individual one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings with Gerardo or myself. Um, Oh, I think we got somebody in here in chat. I don't know if I can. Work. I want to do my practicum in in our schools, but I don't know if I want to work with younger kids or older kids. Can I do both? Probably not. <laughs> you you probably have to pick an age group, um, either a elementary school or a middle school. I know that uh, one of the schools that we had on our list. Uh, I have so many windows open. Was a middle middle school, high school. Uh, where was that? Was that in Elko? Oh, the combined one? Yeah. Um, I think I read it when you were up and it up and <laughs> now I can't. I, I, I've seen a lot of our students do their practicums at, with school counselors. So they get a lot. The school counselors do a lot of different things. So within the human services umbrella. So they get uh, a, a big swath of things are meeting with students or meeting with parents they're you know writing reports they're you know all kinds of stuff um when signing for 205 do we need to, our practicum spot first no you can enroll now because enrollment is open now for spring you just need to request permission to enroll um and anybody who's in this meeting i will let's see how am i going to do this um well yeah, I'll just give you instructions on, on how to and sign up for that. Uh, there's 24 students. How many here, like, let me take a quick, can we do a poll here? Can you do a poll? Uh, do you need their attendance information? No, I want to see how many are planning on signing up for practicum. Yeah, you should have uh, a little in your privacy settings. I Pull, um, see if we can do this really quick here. Oh man, this is like. Uh, yes, no. Yeah, I guess so. I've never used this before, but I've seen people use it. So I'm like this. We're all doing an experiment together. Awesome. <laughs> uh, edit webinar polls. Oh, did you guys get this? Launch polling. Oh, wow. Okay. Go for it. Well, it says we cannot vote, Oscar. Yeah. Ah. Look at this. this is so cool. It's like watching the election, but we're actually going to know what's happening here. Um, uh, Tiffany asks, when will the file for practicum requirements be sent out? Uh, tomorrow morning or this evening. 
I'm, how should I, I, I'm trying to think of what's the best way to send it to you guys. Oh, so yeah, it'll, I'll go, it'll go into the announcements for the classes, 101, 102, and I think that was it, just 101, 102. April is saying be quicker if they did election this way. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, yeah, everybody's got a phone and, uh, okay, so that's 17, that's pretty um, significant. That would be the largest practicum we've ever had in the four years that I've been here. So, and I knew that was probably gonna happen because we had such a big class for 101 and 102. And that's great, and um, I'm looking forward to that. A uh, lot of opportunities. The other thing you wanna think about is, you get to work in your community, you get to be of service, and it's kind of inspiring when you work with folks and you see them you know, being really appreciative of your, your time. And, um, and the kind of missions that are out there that help people. Okay, we're gonna end the poll. So, Oscar, would you remind us what are the prerequisites before I can actually jump into practicum? Yeah, so HMS 101 and 102. Um, if you haven't taken HMS 200, which is ethics, you wanna take it concurrently with 205 uh, in, um, in spring, and we offer 200 every semester, so you shouldn't have any problem getting into that. Um, so all of you folks here should be in 101 and 102, so you have the prerequisites available. If you don't, um, then you might need to, you know, um, take those courses first. But I think the majority of the folks here are uh, in both those classes. Um, Cassandra, you are saying you are not in 101 or 102. Those are foundational courses so that when you go out to serve, to provide your service to any agency, you can have the basics already to begin working. So as Oscar was mentioning, perhaps it will be a good idea to, to take it. Oh, Cassandra, so I've already oh, you have taken them. them. Okay, I see, yeah. Cassandra. Okay, I yeah. see. Good. Yeah, good. so I if you've taken them, it doesn't, you don't have to have taken them this year, but last year or... Some of you might have transferred in with those classes and that's okay too. Um, any other questions? That, I like that poll thing, that's cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess you could set them up in advance too. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with Zoom. <laughs> uh, Uh, no problem if you were late. There, we're also and going to um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, save this meeting and upload it to YouTube for anybody who wasn't able to come, and that will go out in the meeting announcement. I know there are a few students said they couldn't make it, so just to 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 keep our program 100% online, even if you can't come to our synchronous meetings, you can uh, attend asynchronously by watching our videos um, that we upload to my YouTube channel. I wish I could make money on that, but I can't <laughs> since we're <laughs> the college. Uh, but uh, I've been watching all these people get rich on YouTube and I'm like, dang, I gotta get, into, I gotta get me into that. Uh, but uh, don't, don't, if there's things that, you know, it con concerns you're having, your, your, you're worried about, you know, what to do next, even though you've heard us talk about it, just ask us questions, because sometimes those specific questions will kind of illuminate uh, your, your, kinda, your direction, your path. Um, any more questions? Okay, so before we go, I was looking up this uh, poem that I would like to read to you to ornament this, uh, occasion. And while I think we're all really interested in helping people and working for human services agencies and organizations, we are faced with the reality that these are difficult um, experiences sometimes to witness when working with clients. So how do we do it? How do we stay motivated? How do we stay inspired? How do we continue to give our best and be compassionate and and, and sympathetic um, to the folks we work with. And when you see all the horrible things, because you're gonna see some pretty uh, sh shocking things in the world that you haven't been exposed to, or maybe you, you have, but maybe not 
day in, day out. Uh, seeing people struggle with not having enough resources, food, uh, children being uh, abused, um, elderly people being abused. Uh, and some of this stuff can be really hard to take. Um, and so I thought about, well, how, how do I help prepare them? And art and is always a, a favorite way for me to transmit ideas that are transcendent. And so I thought I'd um, read this poem by Robinson Jeffers. He's a California poet. When, so when he talks about the colors, you want to think about um, you want to think about California, not necessarily um, ba back east or Midwest, because these have the different color scheme. And it's called Natural Music. And I'll, I'll read it for you, and we can end our meeting on this note here. The old voice of the ocean, the bird chatter of little rivers. Winter has given them gold for silver to stain their waters and bladed green for brown to line their banks. From different throats intone one language. So if I believe that we are strong enough to listen without division and desire and terror to the storm of the sick nations, to the rage of the hunger smitten cities, those voices also will be found clean as a child's or like some girl's breath who dances alone by the ocean shore, dreaming of lovers. When I read this poem, I think about having to accept all things, good, bad, beautiful, horrific, and that allows me to not become discouraged and recognize that it's all part of one thing. And um, and I've always found that really comforting when working uh, with in difficult situations or, or clients that have experienced terrible loss or tragedy. And I, I wanted to share that with you as you're starting your own journey into this world, um, which is a noble cause. And, um, and it, it, it gives a good tremendous life experience that I don't think can be found any other way, but being in service to others. So. Thank you all for your time and attention. Um, like I said, uh, you need something, you know how to get a hold of Gerardo and I. And uh, yeah, you know, um, I'm excited for you folks. Don't wait too long to, to get started on getting uh, things going for your practicum. And if you need a little bit of direction, just let us know. All right, everyone have a good night and uh, we'll see you soon, virtually. <laughs>